I promised you a spot welder. So here's a spot welder. Let's go make something useful. Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. Well, if you've seen my previous videos, then you know I'm getting geared up to work with sheet metal. I've got the CNC plasma table running here behind me, and I've got the electromagnetic sheet metal brake. And I teased recently that all I need now is a spot welder. And well, I picked one up. This is the HTP Quick Spot 2. I haven't uh, used it very much, but I've been playing around with it and doing some testing, and boy, does this thing make some beautiful spot welds in 20 gauge steel. This is not sponsored, however, it is very heavy. Why don't we go grab a piece of metal and let's make something. This is the underside of my plasma table, and as you can see, I've got my power supply just sitting here on the floor like a chump. And uh, I would like to get this off the floor and attach to this. You can see that the table has wheels, so it's easy to move around. I can roll it into a corner but this is kind of cumbersome to deal with. So what I'd like to do is make a shelf that mounts to the two legs on the inside here that will hold this up off the floor and allow me to wheel it around with the table. And as long as we've got the plasma table and all the other sheet metal tools, we might as well cut it out of sheet steel, fold it up nice, maybe hem the sides to make it strong and tack weld the corners and make a nice little tray with some brackets that we can mount to the legs. So let's go into the computer, sketch something up, and let's cut it out and make it. This is Fusion 360, and we are going to be working over here in the sheet metal tab, and we're gonna design a tray to fit on the plasma table to hold the plasma cutter. And I'd like to actually start with something smaller so I can make a practice piece and actually test all of the bends that I need to make. So what I'm gonna do is make this parameterized for size. So we'll go to Modify, change parameters, and I will add a couple of parameters. So I'll add width, and we'll just say six inches, and then I will add length, and make that eight inches. So we'll make a small one, six by eight inches. That'll make it big enough to actually test the bends that we need to make, but small enough that we don't waste a lot of material, and we can make two or three of these uh, if we need to before going to the final size. So we'll start with a sketch, put that on the XY plane and start with a rectangle. And then I will hit D for dimension and we will set this to the width and the length. Finish that, select that area and go up here and click flange. Now I'm just gonna pick the steel inch rule and we will go back and modify the sheet metal rule. In fact, let's go do that right now. So here we are, steel inch, and what I'm actually gonna use is gonna be 20 gauge mild steel. So this would be 0.035 inches in thick, in thickness. And the other thing that I wanna change here is the bend radius. The default bend radius is the thickness, and what I've found from my testing is that the about twice the thickness as the bend radius is about what my bending brake generates, so I get much better dimensional control if I set the bend radius to thickness times two. So we'll just save that. And now we have the base of our tray. Now let's pull up the flanges for the edges. So I will select this edge, and then I'll hold control and select this edge. Click flange, and we'll just pull those up the height of the tray, and I'm gonna make the depth of this one inch. Now I could parameterize this as well, but I'm just gonna make it one inch. Now we need to pull up flanges on the other two sides, but I want to make some tabs for the corners so that I can spot weld it together. So I'm going to select, just by holding, um, just by clicking and control clicking, all of these edges where I want those tabs to be. So I've got all those edges selected. I'll hit flange and I'll pull this out. And let's pull this out maybe, I don't know, eight tenths of an inch, maybe nine tenths. And that gives us tabs. Let me go back in there and make sure I have these set to inside. So I want the bend position inside on those tabs. And then when I pull up the, t the uh, sides of this, I'll just click and control click here and pull up flanges on the sides, the same one inch, I wanna set those to 
outside. So what will happen then is those flanges will pull up on the outside of the edge and the tabs pull on the inside so they'll be flush with each other and that'll give me a place that I can spot weld these together. Now I actually am a little concerned about the bends lining all this stuff up so I'm going to roll the history marker back one so we're just looking at the tabs and I'm going to create a sketch on the end here and we'll do some cutting. So I will create a circle and I'll use a three tangent circle and I will just select the three edges here and this will put a circle there and I will do the same thing over on this side. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. Control Z to undo that. Three tangent circle. There we go. Finish that sketch and now I'm just going to select, hold uh, control and select all of these regions. Click extrude, push that all the way through. And so now we've cut those tabs so they're round, roll the history marker back and now we have rounded tabs. That'll make it a little bit more forgiving on the exact angle and the exact position of the bend. Now the last thing that I want to do here is I want to add a hem to the tops of these edges. Because of the order of the bends and because of where I need the strength, I think I'm only going to add the hems on the long edges. I'm going to leave them off the short edges and it'll be a little more clear when it comes time to actually bend this to shape why I'm doing that. But uh, for now, we're just going to put it there. And to add a hem, there's not a good way to model this in Fusion 360, at least not an easy way. You can't just say, oh, I want to grab and pull a flange off of here and then change the angle and bend that down. It, it doesn't work for reasons that I don't fully understand. Uh, maybe if there's a better way than what I'm about to show, you can throw that down in the comments. But I'm just going to construct a midplane between the two sides of the box. And then I'm going to put a sketch on that midplane. So I just right clicked on the plane and said create sketch. And I'm going to hit P for project and I'm going to project the side of this into the sketch. And that so now we've got this purple line that is the vertical edge there. Now I'm going to go up here and say create arc, tangent arc, and I'm just going to pull an arc around from there and then I'm going to hit L for line and I'm going to draw a line down to intersect here and then I'm going to select the line and the arc put a tangent constraint so now we have a curve that follows around the top and comes back down and intersects back on the side there so let me put some dimensions on this so I'll hit D I want the radius of this curve to be the thickness which is 0.035 inches and then I want the length of this line to be half an inch. So what that's done is I've got a, a line here now, uh, the profile that curves up off of the top of this sheet metal and comes back down and intersects it again. So now I will select flange, I will select that line and then pull the flange out from that. And I can change the direction to symmetric and then I can pull that flange in both directions out until it gets you know, close to this tab. I obviously don't want to hit the tab, but I'd like to have it be kind of as long as I can manage there. And so I'll just go ahead and say, okay. And that gives me that flange, that hem. Now, if we go over here and look at the bodies, that's actually a separate body right now. But let's uh, go ahead and mirror that to the other side first. So I'll go back here and construct another midplane between the two sides of the box. Then I'll go up here, say create mirror. I want to choose features and I will select that flange we just made and the mirror plane will be the center. And now we see we've mirrored it over to the other side. Okay. And then I will select all three of those and we will go so it looks like it's not here. I'll go back over to the solid workspace, modify, combine, click OK. And now we have just a single sheet metal body that has all of the features in it. And this is the tray that we want to make. Turn off the construction. Now what we need to do is we may need to make a flat pattern from this. So we'll go back to sheet metal, click create flat pattern, select the stationary face, which will be the bottom of the box, 
Click OK. And we get a flat pattern with all the lines on it that we need to fold in order to make this part. Now I'm not gonna go into all the detail in this video of how to set up the cam workspace and actually cut this out with the plasma cutter. If you'd like to see those details, you can go check my recent video on making a splash guard for the plasma torch and I'll throw a link up here in the corner or there'll be a link down in the video description so you can go check that out. The one thing that I do wanna do here though is I would like to make a drawing of this that has the dimensions for where all of these fold lines are so I can mark them on the part. So let me save this first. And then I'm gonna go up here and say file, new drawing from design. And I'm gonna select the paper size that I want. Okay, now it's gonna throw up my drawing here. And let's see, can I go larger? And still have this fit. Eh, it's not convenient. It'll fit if I rotate it. Okay, so I'll place my base view, hit OK there, and I'm going to go ahead and rotate this. Ninety degrees. I guess it didn't make that much of a difference, did it? And let's throw some dimensions on here. And I'll just go ahead and choose dimension, and just go ahead and put some dimensions from the edges up to where the fold lines are. And then we'll come up here to the document settings and we'll change the linear dimension precision and make that three digits. Okay. I believe that's all we need. We have the dimension from this edge up to that fold line up to this fold line, to that fold line, and then coming from the ends, there's only one that's up 962. Okay, I'll go ahead and print this out, and then I think we're ready to go cut this part out and fold it to shape. Okay, I've got a sheet of 20 gauge mild steel here in the plasma table. I've got my work coordinate set to zero. I've got my G-code loaded, and I guess we'll just cut it out. There's nothing left to do but cut it. Um, I, this is, I'll remind you, the smaller tray. I'm not making a full size one until I've tested and made sure that the bend geometry is all good and I can fold the small one together. And assuming that that all works out, then I'll go ahead and go change the parameter in Fusion to make the long one. Let's cut this one out to start. Okay, try number two with the torch plugged in this time. I have to say, I continue to be amazed with just how quickly and neatly that cuts out parts. That is just gorgeous and ugly free. Yes, we are. Well, that looks exactly like the flat pattern I designed. Let me uh, knock the dross off of the back of this with the die grinder and I will meet you over at the surface plate. Okay, I've got the piece all cleaned up and I just ran around the outside of this with the right angle die grinder with some Rolock discs and knocked off the dross from the bottom side and then I went over the edges on the Scotch-Brite wheel on the buffer and went ahead and ran over this with the uh, Scotch-Brite pads on the buffer just to clean it up. And so before we bend this, we need to mark where the bends are gonna go. And I went ahead and just took the flat pattern, made a uh, drawing from it, and I've got the dimensions on all of these bends, so I can just go ahead and mark those out. And I'm gonna use a height gauge on the surface plate to do that. If I run this all the way down, touch it off on the surface of the gauge, you can see we're at zero. And so the first bend here is at 962. So we'll just set this to 962 thousandths. Then we'll just score this by putting the sheet metal against the block and 
scoring it with the height gauge. Nice and simple. Okay, so those are the bends on the end, and I gotta think about which way these are gonna go. They're all gonna, everything's gonna bend up, so it all has to be on this side. Next one's at 583. And that's that. We've got all the bends marked. I think you can see that. Let's go over to the sheet metal brake and do some bending. So I've thought about this quite a bit, uh, about the order I need to make the bends in. I think what I'm gonna do is make the hem bends first, then I'll come back and bend up these tabs, followed by these sides, followed by the ends. So let's start with the hem. And we'll just go ahead and slide it in here somewhere near the middle of the brake and line up the line with the edge of the jaw here. Clamp that down and then we'll start by bending this over as far as we can. So we've got that hem now bent over pretty tight with the, the clamping jaw. And then, we will pull the jaw back, realign our bend here, and then we'll clamp it again and just use this to fold it over. And there's the hem. I actually would like that a little bit further over but I ran into this, so let me back it off just a little bit further. There we go. That gives us a nice hem, more or less just the way we modeled it. Let me do the one on the other side. Those are hems. Next thing we need to bend are these tabs. And these end tabs, obviously I can't reach it with the entire brake, so we're gonna have to do it off of the end. Let me move the camera so you can see. Okay, so what I'm gonna to wanna to do is bend these tabs up by placing them out here at the end, but because this is all the way off the end of the brake, it's gonna be kinda of hard to keep it square. So to solve that problem, I'm just gonna bring in an aluminum square, aluminum because it's not magnetic. Stick it down here on the side. Clamp that in place, and then I can run that up against the end of the brake to keep it square. And then I need a clamp. And I'm just gonna grab one of these loose bars, line that up, line this up. And then I'm gonna need some kind of spacer under the other end to make sure that this thing stays flat. Someplace around here, I've got a scrap of this material. And I'll just put that into the other end of the clamping bar, back where it's out of the way. Line this up with the front edge and we should be able to slide this in, get it square, slide it in and out until we get it in the position we need. Okay, that looks pretty good. Turn on the clamp and we should be able to make the bend. I'm gonna pull this slightly past 90 just so that the tab won't interfere when we make the bend in the other direction. And I can do 
this tab on the same end of the, of the uh, brake. And I'll do the other tabs over on the other end. Okay, so those are the tabs bent up on the ends. So now let's fold up the sides. Now, of course, we can't use a full length clamping bar because these tabs will be in the way, but we can align it up with the front edge of the brake and we need to find a combination of these short pieces that we can pin together to approximate that length. And I think that will do it. Do the other side too. Okay, those are the uh, long edges bent up and you can see the tabs are aligned so they should be able to slide just inside so that we can uh, spot weld those on. So now all we have to do is bend the, uh, bend the ends up. Let's give it a try. Again, I need to find the right combination Just trying to line up as accurately as I can on the score line so that everything will be square when it comes together. And make sure the tabs are going in the right place and we bend. I can live with that and then the spot welder will bring those together, tack those up nicely on the corners bend the other end. I just pinched myself in the little sliding, um, there's a sliding scale here that reads out in degrees as you come up and I just pinched my hand under it, closing it. Note to self, don't do that. Okay. That looks like a tray with hemmed edges. It's remarkably stiff. Let's, uh, let's go put some spot welds on the corners, shall we? Okay, we got the tray here and I brought it over on my fixture table. And the reason I did that is like, because I want to clamp it down and make sure that it's completely flat when we weld it so that the tray doesn't have some kind of a warp in it. A small piece is not that big of a deal. When we do the longer one, it'll be more important. Now the way this, spot welder works is this one has an electronic timer in it. And so you can set the thickness of the material, whether you want to do pulse or continuous current welding, and then you have some fine tuning adjustment to go up or down. Now I have this set to 0.8 millimeter plus 0.8 millimeter because this is about what 0.85, 0.87 millimeter. So the 0.8 is the closest to the actual material that I'm using. So I've got it set to that and we'll just use the defaults. I've played with it a little bit and the defaults seem to work great. So let me just put a couple of clamps on this. Hold that down nice and flat. Corner looks square enough to me. So I will just bring this up. This works better if you use it flat on the table, but I will go ahead and Try not to change the setting. And just clamp it on here vertically and see what we get. And that is really all there is to it. I'll go ahead and do the other two corner, other four corner, three corners. is all we have to do. You can just see there's a nice little nut light little spot weld there in each corner. And this thing is just rock solid. Okay, I am happy with that. Let's take it now and 
Let's go cut out the longer one, fold that together, and put it on the plasma table here. You can't see the plasma table, it's over here. I realize you probably couldn't see those spot welds very well, so I'll bring this over in a different light. You can see that the, uh, it's just a resistance welder, but especially on the lighter material like 20 gauge, it just does a beautiful job. We've got a nice little spot there, nice little indentation, and uh, you can see it on the other side as well. I've done a little bit of testing with this and they are durable. The metal, the parent metal tears out before the weld lets go. So yeah, maybe a couple of spot welds would be better on a corner like this, but honestly one is gonna be plenty just, and just because of the limited space in here, there's not a lot of room to put more than that. Okay, let me go cut out and fold the big one. I was just gonna bend the long one off camera, but when I did this first hem, I discovered something really cool and I wanted to show you. So let's do the hem here on the second side. And doing the initial part of the bend. And yes, it is harder to bend when you're going the full width here. Okay, so I've got that bent back against this jaw. And what I discovered is that when I just pull the jaw back and then try to crush this with the leaf, it's a lot harder than it looks. So what I did, something I saw in the manual and did not understand until I did it, is I brought this back and set it on top of the hem. Now I had seen this in the manual and tried it before and was unable to get it to do anything, but check this out. Let me make sure I've got that more or less straight. We'll turn on the light clamping. And of course that's not enough to do anything, but watch what happens when I pull the leaf. Okay, let's try it in a different position. Because this totally went earlier. Pull this back. That's set up. And let's give it a little nudge with the leaf here. And to be fair, I'm not sure exactly what I did before because it totally just snapped it down. Let's Bring it out and get more of the magnet. Try that again. There it goes. And the magnet has just popped down and completed folding that hem. And that is a full length hem in 20 gauge sheet. I'll go ahead and fold the rest of this, spot weld it, and we'll go install it on the plasma table. Of course, everything is in the way down here, but this tray is going to go in someplace about here. And to mount it, I made a couple of shelf brackets, and these are just the same 20 gauge steel, cut out on the plasma table with a couple of bins, and I've marked where I want to use screws to attach it here. And I'm just gonna use these uh, self-drilling sheet metal screws, and this is just temporary, unless it works. I can always drill the holes out bigger and put bolts through, but I don't have any bolts the right size, so we're gonna use the sheet metal screws. And honestly, I think they're gonna be fine. So I need to get this on and I need to get it square. And the easiest way to do that is with a welding magnet. So I can just adjust this so that it's flush. And then for the height, I've just got a scrap 
of steel here. And I'll slide this down until it touches. That's my height. Put in a clamp just to hold it and drive in three screws. And that is that. I already put one on the other end, but it's behind the electronics box, so it's really hard for you to see. And now all we have to do is attach this to the shelf brackets. I think easiest way to do that is gonna be with a spot welder. Now I'm only gonna put in a couple of spots so that in the future, it'll be possible to drill this out if needed. Go ahead and put on some safety glasses if you have them. Oh yeah, that's nice and solid. Let me get the other end. And I think that's it. We now have a shelf. It's firmly attached. Let's uh, put our plasma cutter power supply up on it. I can do this without spilling anything. <clears throat> Trying to get all the cables untangled here. Well, this is my first sheet metal project at any kind of scale, and I have to say I am really impressed. I have a friend at work that's been extolling the virtues of sheet metal and a spot welder for a long time, namely that you can just slice something out, fold it together, spot weld it, and you're done. And the level of productivity is so much higher than what you can get off of a milling machine or a lathe, assuming that your project is appropriate for uh, sheet metal fabrication. But like I said, this is my first experience with it and I am really impressed. You will probably be seeing more of this in the future. This ended up, even though this is only 20 gauge sheet, it ended up being really strong. I mean, this thing is rock solid. Once you hem the tops of the sides, spot weld the corners, and then everything's triangulated with right angle bends, even this 20 gauge sheet is plenty strong. It's maybe even overkill for this application. But I'm, I'm very, very pleased with this. Now, I do live in Idaho where things are dry and they don't rust, but this 20 gauge mild steel sheet, it's probably gonna rust. I probably should pull this off and paint it. You should subscribe to the channel and see if I ever do that. But uh, for now, I'm very happy with this and you'll see more of these tools in the future. Thank you for watching.